in order to provide a comfortable mechanical ventilation experience for your patients in the intensive care unit. It is important to recognize termination asynchrony and make appropriate adjustment on the ventilator to synchronize the patient's expiratory activities with the cycling mechanism on the ventilator. In order to understand this phenomena, it is critical that you observe what's happening on the ventilator with what's happening on, with the patient's expiratory. So here we are recording the uh, EMG on the transversus abdominis muscle, which is expiratory muscle. And we have two subjects. In subject two, you can see that the patient started to have expiratory muscle activities. When you relate this to the flow over time curve, you can appreciate that the patient started these activities prior to the termination of inspiration. And this is what we call early termination. As opposed to subject one, where the expiratory muscle activities started after a delay from the end of inspiration. So this is a delayed termination. So the ventilator terminated the breath However, the patient did not start exhaling till later. In this example here, you can see that the patient is on pressure control mode of ventilation. And in pressure control mode of ventilation, you set the inspiratory time on the ventilator. And the inspiratory time is finished at this point. However, you can see that the patient has a hump here at the end of inspiration. When you, relate, you, when you relate this to the expiratory muscle activities, you can see that the patient had activated his expiratory muscles and that caused the pressure to go up at the end of inspiration. So the patient terminated his inspiration. However, the ventilator inspiratory time is not finished yet. So this is an example of early termination. Another example of early termination is on pressure regulated volume control mode of ventilation. And you can see, similar to the previous case, that the subject's expiratory muscles or efforts begins just prior to the end of the mechanical inspiratory time. And that's why you see this rise in the pressure at end of inspiration, similar to this one and this one. And because of the expiratory effort, the flow goes down to zero during this time. You can appreciate zero flow in, in this breath, in this breath, and in this breath too. On the other hand, the patient may not finish his inspiratory efforts. However, the ventilator is finished with the inspiratory time. So this is a patient on pressure support mode of ventilation. And we're defining the cycling mechanism based on the flow and this breath the machine will cycle when the when the flow gets to 55 percent of the maximum inspiratory flow so the breath is ended at this point here however if you take a look on the esophageal pressure tracing you can see that the patient continues to have inspiratory efforts here and these inspiratory efforts are reflected on the rise of the flow to the baseline or close to the baseline. And this is caused by the inspiratory efforts of the patient that continue despite the fact that the patient, the ventilator's uh, breath is ended. In order to correct this phenomena here, you need to prolong inspiration on this breath by decreasing the uh, flow uh, sensitivity, I'm sorry, the flow termination level from 55% down to 25% or lower than this. So you can see here by decreasing the uh, flow, the, the cycling mechanism to 25% of the maximum inspiratory flow, at that time it will take longer time to terminate this breath. And this will allow the patient to stay inspiration within this within this ventilatory breath, and the patient will exhale similar to the ventilator cycling mechanism. This could actually be one of the reasons why 
we have uh, double triggering. So you can see in this breath here, the first one that is initiated by the patient, and the patient continued to have inspiratory efforts here. The first breath is ended, however, the patient continued to be in inspiration, and he reached a trigger to uh, trigger another breath without having exhalation after the first breath. So this second breath is actually stacked on top of the first breath, and this is what we call double triggering. And you can go to the uh, video that is uh, entitled Double Triggering for more information about the mechanism of uh, double triggering. Thank you.